The strategy is well diversified across sectors and regions, and the conviction is driven by stock-specific factors rather than top-down themes. There are two clear categories of company which are most exposed to future developments around COVID. On the one hand, you have the stay-at-home winners, predominantly digital businesses where future demand has been rapidly brought forward as a result of the situation that consumers, enterprise and governments find themselves faced with. Then there are the stay-at-home losers, businesses that have been most negatively impacted, companies that rely on travel and physical gatherings, so sectors like aerospace, travel and leisure, physical retail, exhibitions, businesses and so on. However, what I would say is that there is also a large group of companies where the impact from COVID has been relatively modest one way or the other. And as the market is preoccupied with the timing and speed of recovery, some of these high quality, resilient franchises are being overlooked. And I think that apathy towards some of these businesses is providing a really interesting opportunity. Perhaps a key risk for the market centers on the biggest seven or eight stocks which have dominated performance over the last few years. As I speak, those stocks are up on average by about 50% this year and have moved to valuations which require high growth rates to be sustained for many years if they're to prove justified. There are various reasons I could offer as to why the shine might come off these companies. Broader economic strength could reduce the premium paid for growth. Rising interest rates could impact the value of these longer duration cash flows. Or a new president in the US may adopt a tougher regulatory stance. I'm not sure any of these things would be a true surprise, as they're already openly debated by market participants. But there is perhaps some complacency around the potential for those catalysts to occur. In terms of what we are avoiding, we avoid any company that does not meet our strict investment criteria. We have no investments in REITs, energy, mining, life assurance or discretionary retail, and no investments in the biggest seven stocks in the market, which together comprise about 13% of the All Country World Index. In these parts of the market, which we deem prudent to avoid, it tends to be because we can't find the right combination of resilience and valuation.